So welcome once again to Inside School of Ministry and this time we are looking at the part two of eschatology which is the study of the end times. Now it is one of the most important and yet tricky at the same time when it comes to understanding of the happenings that we are expecting when the world is coming to an end. Now the scriptures have a few things to say with respect to this and Christ himself had a few things to say with respect to this. Now, in the study of the end times, there are two terms that we want to understand and we want to have a hold on. The first one is rapture. Now, I want to believe that one way or the other, you have heard about the rapture before. The second thing is the great tribulation or tribulation for short. Now, we have to really understand these things and if you are joining for the first time one of the things we have said is that since this is the school of prophets there are four levels of the prophetic the gift of the prophet the office of the prophet the spirit of a prophet or the spirit of prophecy and the prophecy of scriptures and we understand and we believe that the prophecy of scriptures has got to do with Anything and everything the scriptures have said with respect to the end of the world, the events, the happenings, and how it will affect humanity, Christians, and then unbelievers. So, like I said, the first one is rapture. And rapture is from the Greek word that translates to be caught up. So, when we talk about the rapture, we are talking about an event that is going to take place at the end of the world where people who have accepted jesus christ as their lord and personal savior will be caught up in the heavens now i believe strongly that this heavens the bible is talking about is the first heavens the atmospheric heavens and so this is a season or a period or an event where believers who have accepted jesus christ and have lived according to his standards would be caught up all of a sudden now this is an event that will happen suddenly and as we are going through the scriptures we understand how in the twinkle of an eye people will be caught up or raptured for a better word so rapture is not only for those who are alive but it's also for those who are already dead in christ and so they would also be caught up in the heavens now aside the rapture there's another event that we cannot ignore because of what you are talking about and that is what i refer to as the great tribulation which is a seven year period of all manner of things happening evil things happening to the point where it will be so difficult that people end up even cursing god that is why it is important for everyone to escape the great tribulation now we are going to look at a certain angle with respect to the rapture the great tribulation because there are so many schools of thoughts but we want to look at it from the lens of the scriptures so that we are doing it according to what the word of god prescribes now first thessalonians chapter 4 verses 17 a scripture we want to read but before that we want to look at what jesus said himself in john chapter 14 verses 1 to 3 he says that let not your hearts be troubled you believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself that where i am there you may be also so if you pay attention especially to the verse 3 which i want to read again and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself now this coming again we realize that jesus is living wherever he is to come and receive those who have been raptured now what is happening is that in this coming his feet will not touch the ground that is what the rapture is all about so those who have been raptured would meet him in the heavens to be caught up in the heavens he would also descend from wherever he is 
and then there will be some point where there is a meeting of the two personalities that is those who have been raptured and then the Christ himself and then he will take us to where he has gone to prepare that is the rapture now we want to look at first corinthians no first thessalonians chapter 4 verses 17 and i want to believe that in this school of ministry you are all taking notes you are putting the scriptures down so that you can use them for future purposes verse 17 of first thessalonians chapter 4 says that then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air thus we shall always be with the lord so if you just pay attention to the scripture it says that then we that are alive and remain so the first there are two sides of rapture the first part of rapture is that those who are alive and are remaining during this season or this event will be caught up and it says that and shall be caught up together with them in the clouds now these people they are, the bible is talking about is talking about those who have already been dead in christ they are martyrs of christ have died in the lord they would be raptured first they would go up first then the believers would also be caught up so instantly you see that there are two groups of people who will be caught up in the heavens those who are already dead in christ and then those who are alive in christ now i don't mean those who have not yet received because when i say those who are dead in christ those who believe in the lord jesus christ worked for him lived for him died and as a result they will be raptured now the second people are those who believe in the lord jesus christ as their lord and personal savior and are alive during that second coming where he will come and then meet with those who are raptured so he says that this meeting is going to happen in the clouds and if you have been paying attention you realize that i stated that this is believed to be where i call the first heavens the atmospheric heavens where we have the clouds and this is the reason why we believe strongly that it's going to be the first heavens the atmospheric heavens where we have the clouds and these kinds of things and the bible says clearly in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the lord and that's one of the things that as a student of Isa school of ministry you must believe and you must preach that once we are part of this event we are going to be with the lord forever and you must understand this. this is why you should be happy so the tribulation or rapture should be something that you know as a child of god you should be happy about that is a time or it's an event where we would meet with our maker and we shall live with him forever now i want us to read verse 13 quickly first thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 it says that but i do not want you to be ignorant you 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 understand brethren concerning those who have fallen asleep lest you sorrow as others who have no hope verse 14 for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so god will bring with him those who sleep in jesus and you see he's talking about those who have already died and he's using you know paul is using a term that um, is trying to communicate something because we don't actually die as believers we only sleep in the lord for a time until we are called again so those loved ones are only asleep in the lord so paul is letting us understand that believers don't die we only sleep now there's an instance where mary and martha go to jesus and then they are talking to him concerning their brother lazarus who they say is dead 
and Jesus reminding them that he is the resurrection and the life. That wherever the resurrection and the life is involved, people don't die. They only sleep. So Jesus tells them that he is not dead. He is only asleep. Listen, as children of God, we don't die. We only sleep. Those who have gone ahead of us, they are not dead. They are just asleep in the Lord. Waiting for the day where we will meet with them in the clouds. With our Father, our Maker in the heavens. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him, will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. So, here again we want to make certain things clear that those who are dead in the Lord would go first. We will not precede them. Now, this is eschatology. As tricky and as boring as it might sound sometimes, you know, we can just follow the scriptures and understand how the events will happen. And I know some of you have had visions and revelations about these things. This is a school of prophets. And one of the things about the prophetic grace is to also know and see about the end times. You should know how things would happen. You should have a belief system about how things are going to happen. Now, one of the things that we want you to understand clearly, wherever you are listening to me from, is that those who are dead, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 downwards, especially 14, is let us understand that we will not precede those who are already dead in the Lord or asleep in the Lord. So, those who are alive when the trumpet is blown would only go after those who are dead in the Lord would be raptured. And I believe that God is doing this because he's giving them that honor, those who have run the race and have completed. And it is my prayer that you would also run your race and complete. So, they would go ahead of those who are alive and then those who are alive would also follow but at the end of the day we would all be caught up in the heavens and we will meet with jesus christ now there are four schools of thoughts with respect to the tribulation and the rapture the first school of thought believes that the rapture would happen just before the great tribulation now, like I've said, the tribulation are a series of events that are going to happen and it's going to be so difficult, painful. There will be gnashing of teeth so much that people will not be able to bear it. And so there are people who believe that the rapture would happen before the great tribulation. And I want to know your thoughts. Now, there are people who believe, so those, the first group of people are the pre-tribulation. That's what they believe in. The second is mid-tribulation. They believe that um, after... The tribulation starts then the rapture would happen the second group of people that is mid tribulation the third group of people post tribulation now they believe that the rapture would happen after the great tribulation and if you would ask me personally i believe in the pre-tribulation that the tribulation would happen only after the saints, the elect of God has been taken. Jesus said that the time would have to be cut short because of a season that is coming that even the elect cannot stand. And so God would have to find a way of taking the elect away before that season starts, that tribulation starts. So that is why I believe in the pre-tribulation. Then the last one is the partial rapture or partial tribulation. So we are going to look at two. That is the pre- tribulation and then the post tribulation because these are the most dominant beliefs that we have now that the rapture will happen after the tribulation or the rapture will happen before the tribulation and like i've just told you if you are listening to me that i believe strongly that the rapture will happen before the great tribulation and i want to encourage each and everyone here you must make it a point to be part of the rapture you must make it a point. If you are listening to me, you must, you must make it a point. There are some people who believe that they don't make it for the first one. After the Great Tribulation, there will be another chance and they want to be... It, the, the Great Tribulation 
which is supposed to last for seven good years is going to be very difficult and i would encourage and entreat everybody why you have to give your life to christ you have to make it for the first time you really have to if you are here listening to me you are not sure about your salvation i think at this point is a time where you should make a decision that i want to live for christ so that when we are being raptured you will be raptured with us and you will not be part of those who would suffer the tribulation you would understand that in our world right now there are so many things that are happening so much that people feel that the difficulty is so much but trust me in the great tribulation the difficulty will be so much hard it will be difficult so please if you are listening to me you are in school of ministry don't just be in school of ministry and then miss heaven you have to make it to heaven so like i said there are two schools of thought you want to focus on that the pre-tribulation and then the post-tribulation now you would want to tell me where you think you stand now i'm going to give you certain you know schools of thought you know or certain ideas or ideologies that both you know belief systems have or both schools of thoughts have so we are going to start with the pre-tribulation number one like i've said that the rapture occurs before the tribulation that is the belief number one the rapture occurs before the great tribulation number two the church is going to experience revelation chapter 3 verse 10 before the great tribulation so we want to quickly read revelation chapter 3 verses 10 and i believe that is going to be a good lesson for so many of you revelation chapter 3 verses 10 because you have kept my command to pray there or to persevere I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. This is Jesus speaking. So what we are saying is that the church is going to experience Revelation chapter 3 verses 10 before the tribulation. I want to read it again. Because you have kept my command to persevere that's why everybody here you must persevere whatever you are doing for god persevere don't get tired keep on doing what you are doing i also will keep you from the hour of trial so this is against those who believe that the rapture is after the tribulation jesus is saying here that i will keep you from that trial that is why the pre tribulation believers believe that the rapture will happen before the tribulation and i believe in this also and jesus said in verse 10 that i will keep you because you have persevered i will keep you from the trial that shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth the third point the day of the Lord begins with the tribulation. So, if you have read the scriptures, revelations, you realize that that's what we refer to as the day of the Lord. Now, basically, the day of the Lord is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in this return, we believe that this is what is going to kick start the great tribulation it is only after this return that we will see things happening number four thessalonians first thessalonians chapter five verses two to three and you all want to make notes so that you don't miss on this of course unless you want to come back and be watching the video over and over again to make your notes now revelation chapter five verses two and three this is still you know i'm giving you ten points or 10 ideas or ideologies with respect to those who believe in the pre-tribulation first Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 2 to 3 it says for you yourselves have known perfectly 
that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. So the day of the Lord comes and then there is sudden destruction. So the day of the Lord comes, that is the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that as soon as that day comes, what precedes that is destruction, which comes upon the people and is going to be sudden as labor pains in the life of a pregnant woman and they cannot escape them. So the day of the Lord comes according to the scripture, then the tribulation starts. So we believe that this day of the Lord which is what we refer to as the rapture that once christ is coming down to meet with those who have been raptured the raptured saints immediately that thing happens there's going to be a lot of distraction and that is the tribulation so you must make it to heaven you must make it for the rapture so the fourth point is that the tribulation is going to happen after the rapture because of what we are reading in the scripture number six rapture and the second coming separated by seven years the rapture and the second coming is separated by the seven years so the rapture happens the tribulation happens then the second coming you would see that the reason why the second coming is different from the rapture even though christ is going to come in that season of the rapture is because even though he's going to come again his feet will not touch the earth in the rapture he will still be suspended in the heavens and meet with those who have been raptured that is why that is not really referred to as the second coming. That is just the rapture and the day of the Lord. Then there's going to be the tribulation. Then there's going to be the second coming actually when he is going to come to the earth. And then his kingdom shall be established on the earth. Now, the next thing is that the living Israelites will be judged at the second coming. The next thing is that the living Gentiles will be judged at the second coming. The next thing is that parents of millennial population come from survivors of judgment on living Jews and Gentiles. Number 10, believers of church age judge in heaven between rapture and second coming. So, there's going to be a judgment and some of you have listened or there are times where we speak about judgment and this judgment is not talking about the judgment between those who are evil and those who are righteous or the judgment between those who have given their life to Christ and those who have not that is what we actually refer to as condemnation because the moment you believe you are judged the moment you do not believe you are already condemned this judgment is according to your works for god that is why everybody must do something for god this judgment is also referred to as the sharing of the crowns that believers will be given crowns per what they've done for the lord this judgment is not about condemnation whether those who are going to hell or heaven no that's not it this judgment is for those who have been raptured been taken to heaven and they are being judged they are being rewarded according to what has been given to them to do on this earth so when we talk about judgment we are not talking about um those who are going to be condemned go to the lake of fire go to hellfire we are talking about those who have made it to heaven and are being judged based on what they have done so there's a parable where jesus says that um, a man is traveling and then he gives five talents two talents one talent and when he comes back he's judging them based on what they've used their talent for so everyone that is raptured 
is going to be judged based on what you have done. For instance, you are a child of God, but the things you are doing now cannot be compared to what other ministers are doing. I hope you understand this. Which means that everybody must strive to work for the Lord, to do something for God. You have to do something for God because you'll be judged based on what you have done for God. There are people who have won a million souls, people who have won thousands of souls, people who have built churches, people who have taken care of ministries, men of God. There are people who have done so many things for the kingdom, people who have financed the kingdom. There are people who have done so many things, built retreat centers, built prayer camps, helped people in the church so these things are what we are going to be judged based on now this is it for those who believe in pre-tribulation and like i've told you already this is what i strongly believe in that the rapture would happen before the tribulation and i've given you some scriptures which you can go over again and again Now, as we want to round up, we want to look at post-tribulation. Those who believe in the post-tribulation. Number one, they believe primarily, basically, that the rapture would occur after tribulation. So, unlike the pre-tribulation, they believe that the rapture would occur after the tribulation that believers would have to go through this season of difficulty pain torment torture destruction before they will be raptured to the heavens that's what they believe in number two as we've read from revelation chapter 3 verses 10 they believe that this would have to happen after the tribulation that's what they believe. So basically, what the pre-tribulation believers hold as their belief, the post hold the opposite of that. For instance, one other thing the post-tribulation guys believe in is that the day of the Lord begins at the close of tribulation that the day of the Lord when Jesus Christ comes to pick his people those who are dead in Christ and those who are alive it will be done at the end of the tribulation they also believe second no first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 2 to 3 like we have discussed already they also believe that this is going to happen at the end not at the beginning of the tribulation and if you are here we read first Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 2 to 3 and let me read it again. Verse 2 says that for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. Now, they believe that this is going to happen after the tribulation. But it, it, if you read the scripture, it, it doesn't really hold because then there's another destruction the Bible is talking about after this event. So then, if, if you believe in that, the, the issue is that you are saying that there's going to be a lot of, you know, tribulation in the seven years. And after he comes again for the rapture, there will be another tribulation and destruction. And that has no hope. But this is what they believe in. But as students of the ministry, you have to understand this. And you have to, you know, you have to have where you stand. You know, you, you must stand somewhere. You must believe in something. That's why I'm giving you the scripture so that you can follow it and then know where you stand. One other thing is that they believe that the rapture and the second coming are a single event. They believe that the rapture and the second coming are a single event. The next thing is that they also believe like the way the pre-tribulation believers say that Israel shall be judged at the second coming, they believe there's nothing like judgment. They don't believe that. The final thing they, they want us to understand is that believers of church age judged after second coming or at conclusion of the millennium. So, there are a few things 
that we would want to understand with respect to the tribulation, rapture, judgment, second coming, and the day of the Lord. Now, this is my assignment for you all that are paying attention. Briefly explain these terms that I've just mentioned. Rapture, tribulation, the second coming, the day of the Lord, and then judgment. Now, you would all have to get scriptures to support what we are saying here. And whatever thing you are going to say, please do your best to add scripture and make sure that you are talking from the standpoint of a scriptural basis. And then let me know your ideas. You can put it in the comment section. You can send it to me personally. But I would want to read all of them in the comment section so that I can have it all in one place. So, um, also because there are a lot of messages that I will not be able to respond to if you send it personally. So, just put it in the comment section. I encourage everybody, put it in the comment section. What's your thoughts? You don't have to be able to answer all. If you're able to answer just about two, one, three, that is fine. If you're able to explain one, two, or three, that is fine. But just do what you think you understand from this video. And if there are also questions you have, you could answer those, you could ask those questions quickly. And then I would respond to them in the comment section. That if there's anywhere you are having you know issues or doubts, just put them in the comment section and then I would respond to them with the appropriate scriptures. So God bless you for joining. I want to believe that you studied something and I'm hoping to hear from you soon. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. See you soon. So, we hope that you've been blessed by this. And this is a wonderful opportunity to give your life to Christ if you haven't done so. And so, if you want to give your life to Christ, send us a message via the number on WhatsApp or send us a message on Facebook at Pastor Selim. If you want and are in need of prayers and counseling, it is on the same platforms. Let us know and we'll be there to pray for you. God bless you and see you next time.